Um, welcome to the last lecture before Christmas. And we already feel that it's almost Christmas. Um, um, but uh, I'm very happy to welcome Philippe Rahm tonight here uh, at Städelschule. Um, because within our lecture series on pavilions, I think his presence made, made a lot of sense. Uh, maybe less because he specifically designs pavilions or so, but uh, I think he has a very specific position uh, regarding um, the relationship between architecture and the use of time or temporal parameters and maybe more specifically rather ephemeral parameters. And um, I think in that respect, uh, Philippe Rahm's work is probably one of the most uh, advanced and pronounced um, positions uh, within contemporary architecture. And um, we know each other, I think, from the, from the, from the AA, where we were teaching mm -hmm. together. And uh, he has uh, had different academic positions, uh, like the AA, but also teaching in Lausanne, <coughs> in Paris. And um, his work um, is very specific in the sense of uh, approaching architecture as uh, physiological phenomenon and which is probably less has less to do with physical boundaries in a traditional sense but more uh, with a specific idea of uh, climatic or environmental approaches and uh, that's why we have been when we were discussing the program for the semester we were very keen on having uh, Philip here at Städelschule. His work has been uh, widely exhibited and uh, in many shows worldwide, uh, solo shows uh, like the, uh, his contribution to for the Swiss Pavilion in Venice uh, in 2003, I think it was, and um, also contributions, of course, to this year's architectural biennial in Venice. And um, within the Arsenal, some of you might have seen it, then uh, shows in San Francisco or uh, the CCA Peter Kyushu in Japan. Um, and um, his work is also widely published. Uh, I think one of his major books, I think, is, was done in relation to his contribution to the Swiss Pavilion. Uh, it was called uh, Physiological Architecture, uh, which is really a book that I can highly recommend to you. And um, he is he's now currently, or is working on several projects uh, that are, I think, extremely interesting for us here in this discussion, like the Winter House for Fabrice Hubert, which is, I think, an older project uh, to a certain extent, then a project for uh, a client or friend of ours in Austria, uh, the Eternal Summer, mm -hmm. and uh, a very recent project uh, which is in Magera, close to Venice, uh, quite a large project, but I won't uh, probably introduce too much and give over to Philippe. Please give a warm word of welcome to him. Okay, um, so Thank you for the introduction and for the invitation. Um, sorry, I'm a little cold, so <coughs> I'm, I'm not so it's not so easy for me to speak. But I, I hope uh, it will go. It will be okay. Um, I, I will um, I will sh show some different project and uh, to, to and try to to explain a little uh, the approach I have uh, about architecture and the way. That I, I think architecture is uh, not only inside the visible, but it's also inside the invisible. It's uh, uh, it's uh, there is a kind of one scale, but the scale of architecture go also in the macroscopic or in the atmospheric scale, and it's go also into the microscopic uh, scale. And I think uh, today uh, these different scale are really interesting into the field of architecture. And um, and you and uh, 
When I, I begin to work, I was more interesting into the, the void than the sickness. I think architecture before, uh, it's, it's really a, a question of climate, it's really a question of space. Uh, and uh, and the, the fact that you use a wall or a roof and, uh, to, to, to keep the, the space inside a place, it's uh, not the reason of, of architecture, it's secondary, it's a consequence of, uh, of the way that you have to change a part of the climate somewhere because there is some rain or it's cold or there is some wind and so you have to transform uh, a part of the climate and to, and to create a, a special climate inside one place and you could go inside. And, um, and if you want to do this you have to use some wall or some thickness but uh, uh, but it, it is not really the, <coughs> the, the, uh, the goal of architecture, it's just a consequence. So I was thinking that we, maybe today we could also work more deeply inside the question of the void. And, uh, and it, but if you look to the history of architecture, the question of the void, of the emptiness, it's, uh, there is not a lot of think about it because uh, if, because there is a lot about uh, the thickness, about proportion of the facade or the, the proportion of the column, the way to design the column or the way to design a wall, but not really on the, on the void. And the reason for this, it, it, it is that uh, until the 17th uh, century, uh, uh, between, uh, until the, the Lumière, uh, the Renaissance, uh, they, they, we think that uh, that uh, the void, the, the idea of the void was that the void is just uh, one element. It's something completely empty. It's just uh, the element of the void and of the air, but it's not a composition of different elements. And so, uh, so the idea that the, the, uh, the, that the air was nothing. And uh, uh, in the 16, uh, in 1700, uh, in, uh, century, uh, people begin to understand the physical quality of the void and, um, and after we, we understand also the chemical quality of the void, it was uh, in, in uh, 18, uh, 18th century, uh, 19th century, and, uh, and after, at the end of the 19th century, we begin to understand also the biological quality of the void with the pasteur. We understand that there is also s some... Uh, and so it's, it's the idea that the void, is the, the space is not empty. It's something uh, really new in the history of architecture. And, uh, and now we know that the, the void is full of particles, of chemical particles. It's full of electromagnetic wavelengths, of uh, radiation, of... Uh, of uh, of uh, of microbe and uh, and so we uh, there is a lot of thing inside this uh, inside this inside the emptiness and uh, so I, I was uh, when I begin to work I was interesting into this aspect and uh, and we work on the on the idea of physiological architecture I will I will present some project about this uh, uh, in the middle of the lecture but. Uh, uh, something changed at one moment, it was uh, maybe in 2004, something like this. Uh, it was a question of the sustainable development and, uh, uh, and, um, and, for, for, uh, and, and, uh, and the question of the sustainable development come from the consequence of the global warming. We know because some scientific working in the university understand that there is a, a connection between the global warming and the, the green gas effect uh, production by human. And, uh, and uh, they find this result some 10 years ago and, uh, and they each year they, they try with model, with software models, they, they try to, to, to modelize the climate and they try this connection between uh, green gas effect produced by human, but human uh, uh, and, uh, and the global uh, warming. And so, uh, so this, uh, this idea uh, come in the field of the political field and also come into the, into the, um, the architectural field. And, 
and the uh, and the idea was we we have to reduce the quantity of uh, green gas effect we produce because we don't want that we we don't want to participate to the global warming and so for me it's not uh, it's I, I am an architect i i'm not uh, uh, i'm not um, uh, I'm like a citizen. I'm interested into this uh, idea of, of um, sustainable development. But as an architect, I'm more interested into the way that maybe all these new questions could transform the language of architecture. So maybe if I could be a little pervert, I could say that I have no interest into sustainable development really, but I have interest into the way that it changed the language of architecture. Because I think it's give new tools for, uh, thinks, for thinking about architecture. And, and, and I say maybe it's a chance for architect to, to transform the way to, to design architecture and maybe to think another way to, uh, about architecture. And uh, uh, here, th this is some, some very well-known uh, result. We know that we produce, we have, we produce a lot uh, of uh, energy, and so we have to reduce it. <coughs> and we know that inside the building, there is some uh, different uh, approach to, to do it, to reduce the quantity of energy using in the building. It is to have a very big insulation and to have a, a ventilation double flux with heat recuperator and to have another, uh, to have better size for heating system. And uh, so <coughs> this is uh, the, the, the tool, the very common tool tools for uh, sustainable architecture. But inside this result, I think we could try to analyze each point and not just to adapt to use the technique uh, on uh, you, you design architecture and after you use this technique and you, 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 um, <coughs> you post uh, this technique on the, on the building, but we, we could try to use this technique at the beginning of the project and maybe to invent new form and new way of living through this uh, technique. So it is really the idea to take the problem as a tool for reinvent, reinvent architecture. Uh, so this is the old uh, situation before. So without uh, insulation, without uh, uh, air re renewal, and this is a new situation with, with a better. Uh, and so this is the consumption of, uh, uh, of energy into an old building and for the, for the same place, for the same building, today we could, we could reduce by a factor of eight the, the, um, the energy that we put inside the building. So, uh, so there is some, uh, about this, there is some uh, recommendation. For example, in Switzerland, uh, to reduce the energy inside the building, there is some data recommendation like this. Uh, a bathroom, you could eat, a, a toilet or corridor, you could eat at 15 degrees Celsius. And the uh, bathroom at 22 degrees Celsius, it means that it depends of if you are naked or not, if you are nude or not, or if you are moving or not, because if you move, you do some sport, you, you create your own uh, uh, energy and so you don't need uh, a warm space. You, you, we say that uh, a sport hall, you have to warm it at 14 degrees Celsius and not 22 because uh, if it's 22 it's too warm and so you, you, you become too sweet. Um, and um, and living room, you are, you are sitting in the, in the sofa so you don't move but you, are not, you have some clothes. And so 20 is okay. Kitchen, you are moving a little and you cook and you do some movement, so it could be uh, 18. So it's, it's, a, it's a recommendation in Switzerland. And it looks it's look like a new functionalism a little, you know, like it looks like a new determination you have to. But, but is, is there is a kind of. Um, of um, uh, of uh, it is very interesting for the sustainable development because if you warm all the bedroom at 16 degrees Celsius in Switzerland and not at 22 degrees Celsius, you win uh, four degree for each people, uh, each, uh, so it's create a lot of energy. So it's a very interesting uh, measure. But for me, it's not really that uh, this point that interests me, but it is maybe more that the way that 
we could see that in one house we could have different temperatures. So uh, when you think about, you think before, you think about one house, you think um, like one space or like different room, but m maybe you could think the house like a difference between two temperatures, like a polar polarization of two temperatures between 22 degrees Celsius in, in one end and, uh, and 15 degrees Celsius uh, in the other end. And uh, so I work on this, uh, on this uh, um, approach for the, this Biennial, for the uh, Venice Biennial this year. Uh, here you could, there is another point, it is uh, the physical uh, point. It is uh, when we, uh, the way you use, if you use radiator or ceiling heating or, or uh, floor heating, you could see that you have some different curve because the hot air, the warm air go up it's more light and so it goes on the ceiling and the cold air falls down because it's a, it's, a, it's a physical law, Archimed physical law that creates this movement. And uh, sometimes you could see that uh, sometimes in one room you could have uh, uh, 28 degrees Celsius there and here you could have uh, only uh, 18 degrees Celsius because the, the temperature go up. And so you always turn on the radiator, but it's always like this, and so you lose a lot of energy under the ceiling, and here you are still cold because, uh, uh, because it's... Uh, so you could see some different curve here, and you, it's an ideal curve. It is uh, the first one. It, is, uh, it could be there very cold, it could be 10 degrees Celsius there, but here it could be, it must be uh, maybe more 21 degrees Celsius. And so this is the way, this is the movement of the air. And uh, so, uh, so I, I take this idea, this physical idea and this, and this uh, sustainable idea, not uh, as tool for designing architecture. And, uh, and so this is a section and, uh, of the project in Venice, and, and you will see it's, it's become also the project for uh, the house for one, uh, one uh, French artist called uh, Dominique Gonzalez Foster. She asked me to design his uh, house, and uh, so I work on, on this process to, to, for doing uh, the, the, the architecture. So the way it is to introduce two, like two radiators inside the space, and to create a kind of uh, imbalance of uh, a thermal imbalance inside the building. Uh, so uh, the first platform, it's a cold platform at 15 degrees Celsius, so it's like a, for a corridor or for a toilet, like we see before. And the second platform, it's at 22 degrees Celsius. So it creates a movement of air like a Gulf Stream, like a movement of convection inside the, uh, inside the, inside the geography. It means that the, 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 the air come on the, on the warm platform and go up, and after the, the, the air touch the cold platform and fall down, and it creates a kind of wind, a, a micro wind inside the, inside the house, inside the section of the house. And uh, this, uh, um, this, uh, this movement, small movement of air, create a kind of thermal geography, thermal landscape inside the building with different zones. You could see that some, uh, here it's 22 degrees Celsius, here it's uh, 20, and here it's 18, and here it's uh, 16. So it's cre it, it, uh, there is a, the invention of uh, kind of, uh, of new indoor uh, geography. And uh, you, you could see some shape that are coming from this, uh, uh, this polarization, this imbalance of, uh, of thermal imbalance inside the, inside, the, the, uh, inside the house. And this is the movement of the air. Um, the hot air go up and it fall down, the cold air fall down. And so at the Biennale this year, I just present these uh, two platforms. It was very minimalistic uh, inter intervention, but it was really this idea to, uh, 
just to, to present a kind of new way, a new new way for designing a space uh, with an idea that you don't. It's like a new element for architecture. It's not no more a column. It's no more a wall, but it's a, a thermal imbalance, like a new. Uh, a new language or new way to designing uh, uh, the house, creating this uh, uh, thermal landscape inside the, the space. And so it's it's look like nothing because you see nothing, but the temperature. Uh, this is a there is a, a, a cold water running on the upper platform and warm water running in pipe in the in the in the you know, on the floor platform. And so it creates this uh, movement of, of the air inside the, inside the space. And, so, and we see nothing. It's just inside the, the perception of the space. It's just inside the invisible uh, thermal dimension. And uh, so, uh, so it, it, it's sky, it is uh, uh, the project show at the Biennale. It's a kind of uh, n not really a prototype, but more like a, the, the basic uh, language, uh, the basic element of the language. And so, I, in this, so I try to use this element to, to design one house. And so we 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 we, we take a, a more bigger space. Uh, it's it's like a 100. 100 square meter uh, house, and we, we could change if they, if she has more money or less money, we could change and uh, readapt the volume of the of the house, and we introduce these two thermal uh, uh, um, disequilibre uh, inside inside the house with these two radiators, the cold radiator at 15 degrees Celsius, so it's a low level of comfort, and, uh, and uh, the hot radiator at 22 degrees Celsius, it's the highest uh, part of the comfort. And, uh, and so, after it creates this thermal zone with this different uh, uh, position, different uh, area inside the section. And after, if we use a Swiss recommendation, we could say that, okay, here it's 22, so it's uh, the bathroom, here it's more the living room, at 20, here it's more the kitchen. So it creates like a landscape, and we could uh, find different positions for, for function. Or, or, and so we introduce the furniture inside the, inside the section, inside the volume. And after we introduce the flow that connect uh, this different uh, furniture, different thermal uh, part of the house. And this is the section, one and the other. And, uh, and some image of the, of the house in the countryside near Paris. Paris. And this is uh, the way to design it. It is, we have the, here it is a warm radiator. And uh, yes, it is a, no, it's a, sorry, it's a cold radiator, this one. And the warm radiator it at the other side. And uh, so we could see different uh, uh, different area could be created uh, inside this uh, volume of uh, of air. And uh, and we, if we look to this one, we could see uh, all the the idea all the floor are open because we have to let the air the movement of the air uh, uh, going through the floor. And, it's, and all the house become like a, like an atmosphere, like a, a climate, and uh, and so the house, the, the way of living become like a, a climate, and you use the physical law of Archimede uh, to for moving inside the house, and you also use the idea of of the sustainable development that you you create one house between 22 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius, but not inside different box, but inside all the house. And at the end, 
the normal of the temperature is maybe 18 degrees Celsius between 22 and 15 and so you could say also that uh, you you win energy because you don't uh, you don't uh, expand too much energy inside the building and but if you are too cold here you could move you could have a kind of migration inside the house you could uh, like in the in the like uh, in Switzerland, in summer, you go in the mountain and, uh, in, uh, and you go, you move through the territory uh, to find different climate at different time in the in the year, and so you could also have this kind of migration inside this uh, interior um, space. And so it, it, it was this kind of uh, macroscopic scale of the project, but there is another scale of the project. It was this. Uh, small uh, chili on the platform. There is uh, some chili and uh, some mint candy. I, I have one here. And, uh, and because uh, we, and we proposed to have on the warm platform from, uh, at 22 degrees Celsius to have some, some a, a kind of chili cream. Uh, it was not a, it was not a chili cream, but, but a skin, a skim cream and uh, on the cold platform to have some mint uh, candy. And uh, so now the project go into the microscopic, it fall down into the kind of physiological scale. And this is a mint candy and, uh, and it was a cream of, uh, of, um, of paper. And what's happened here, it is also another uh, perception of the space. It, it is a kind of uh, physical uh, or neurologic perception of the scale. It means that uh, to, if you want, if you, when you feel if it is cold or hot outside the body, it's true you have some uh, on the skin or in, inside the mouse, you have some sensor, some uh, skin sensor, and it's, it is kind of, it's, it's a kind of, it's a kind of neuronal skin sensor, and it's uh, when it's cold, you have the it's touch one uh, channel, in, and the channel go into the brain and give uh, the information that it is 15 degrees Celsius, and so you know that it is 15 degrees Celsius because if it is, uh, you could see on this uh, diagram, if it is between zero degree and uh, 15 degrees Celsius, it activates the TRPM, uh, it's, uh, sorry, TRPM, uh, oh, no, it's, uh, TRPM two, three, okay. If I, I know better the other because I use the other. It is b between 15 degrees Celsius and, uh, and, 50 and 25 degrees Celsius. It, acti it activates a TRPM eight. It's another ion channel, neuronal ion channel. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's when this channel inside the body is activated, it gives the impression that it is 15 degrees Celsius. So it means it's a little cold, 15 degrees Celsius. So 22, it's, uh, uh, it's, you feel nothing. When it's 24 or 26, it becomes a little warm. And when it is 15, it becomes a little cold. And, uh, and so uh, this, ch this channel could be activated. It, it activates one part inside the brain. And, and uh, it's exactly when, if you eat mint or if you touch mint, uh, it is exactly the same channel that it is activated. So it means that the feeling to, to when you drink uh, uh, mint tea in the desert, uh, in, uh, in, in Morocco, for example, the idea to be refreshed by mint tea, it's not uh, just a cultural idea, it's really that it activates uh, this sensation. And it's why when you use, you eat mint uh, candy, you have this feeling to be fresh. And uh, it's because it activates the same zone inside the brain than, uh, than the, the 15 degrees Celsius. And, uh, and so, um, and uh, if you want to activate the 22 degrees Celsius, uh, like uh, the bathroom uh, uh, level of comfort, you, you have to use another, uh, it, it, is, it is another uh, ion channel, it is a TRPV3, uh, a 4 and 3, and 3. And this one, you could mix, and, and it, what we want to do, it is to mix some different uh, ingredients, some comfort and some chili to 
to create a kind of cream to, to, to have on the skin at 22 degrees Celsius. So it means that uh, we invent uh, this uh, eau de chaleur, or like, a, uh, like a cream of, at, of 22 degrees Celsius. So it means you could be maybe in a 15 degrees Celsius, but you put some cream on the skin, and so you have to, the feeling to be in a 22 degrees Celsius space. So it's a kind of mixed uh, between the atmospheric scale and the microscopic uh, scale. And uh, so we, we begin to work with some uh, laboratory in Switzerland. It was too complex, uh, too, it, it was impossible in the time because the Biennale begin, uh, uh, Aaron Besky was choose in January and so it was too short to really to develop it. But we, we began, but we could not l launch the production because it, uh, we have also some so you don't need uh, clothes, you could be naked inside the space and, uh, and, uh, and this tradition uh, f like um, Monte Verita in Switzerland, the idea to, to be outside and so there is a big tradition of 28 degrees Celsius for, of living outside and, uh, and, so it's, it's, and so those two platforms become like a, a, a kind of a perpetual summer at 20 two degrees Celsius and a kind of perpetual winter but, me, but the scale is not the same, it's just reduced at the scale of the house but uh, it, it was a little like, like, uh, like this so. and so you could also be free to be uh, yeah. and uh, so this uh, microscopic scale uh, of the, this neurological scale uh, we work on it uh, First, for the Biennale, uh, Nicolas Pic spoke about this project. Uh, it was uh, the Hormonarium in the Swiss Pavilion in, uh, in 2002 in Venice Biennale. And um, at this time, we work with scientific in Switzerland. And, uh, and I, I, I begin, I, uh, I'm now friend with some of them. And uh, it's really nice because they invite me also for a lecture or for conference symposium, scientific symposium in the in the world. And the next year there is there something in Berlin in the next summer with all the specialists of the melatonin and all the circadian cycle. This, the, 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 it, this is this neurologic connection between the light and and the, and the, and the brain and. Uh, and this is a very interesting uh, result. It is a, a scientific called Alfred Lewy in uh, 1980. Uh, he find, uh, he discover this uh, result. It is a relationship between the melatonin rate, uh, the m melatonin movement of, um, of uh, inside the brain, inside the blood and the relation with this uh, secretion of melatonin, the relation with the light, the natural light. So the melatonin, it is a hormone inside the body, it's a, and it's related with the, with the sleep. It means that when you, there is a lot of melatonin inside the blood when you sleep, uh, and there is less melatonin during the day. And uh, so it's, uh, it's not a uh, science fiction, it's really a scientific fan, uh, result about uh, a movement of uh, melatonin inside the, inside, the, inside the body. And there is different hormone related with this, uh, prolactin also each, uh, each day, it's called circadian cycle, it's a day cycle, during day and night there is a variation. And there is other uh, variation, for example, for the woman each month there is some uh, uh, variation inside the body and also in the in the whole life uh, with the uh, puberty and the, there is also a kind of clock uh, like this and and we think that all these time movement are related with melatonin it's a it's a kind of uh, time hormone inside the body and uh, and Alfred Lewy showed that uh, during the night you could see this is a dark blue you have a lot of melatonin inside the blood but uh, and you could see that at 1 a.m. during the night and 2 a.m. you have a lot of melatonin and what he do, he turn on the light uh, so it was a darkness and he turned on the light during uh, one, two hours during the night and we could see that the level of melatonin fall down and, uh, and uh, he, he fall down and if he turn off the light 
uh, the melatonin level go up. So it, it was published in Science, uh, the new news from the magazine Science, in uh, 1980. And I think it's really interesting because it, it's, for me it, was, it create a new link between one traditional em element of architecture, the idea of light, uh, because when you study architecture, you have oh, this idea, you use element of architecture of light, space, and stairs, maybe, or, or, uh, uh, or column. Uh, and, uh, and so, but all this, this element in the, in the traditional architecture, this, these elements are always inorganic, or always uh, separate from the body. They are a kind of, uh, in, they, they, um, they are inside the visible world, but they are no connection with us. They are, it's uh, only if we go bam, inside, inside the column, but there is no connection with us. And, uh, and in this result, we show that there is a connection, a kind of organic, a biological connection between the body and one inorganic element uh, like the light. And so the, the, the connection between this, it is uh, the relation between the melatonin, the, the, the light. When, when the eye receives some light, the retina receives some light, it gives information to the pineal gland inside the brain and it blocks the secretion of melatonin. And if there is the darkness, if there is no light, so the pineal gland understands that they, there is no light, and so they secrete melatonin. And so there is, so there is a relationship between the night and the sleep and the melatonin uh, cycle uh, through this, uh, this connection. And so it's, uh, uh, so I, uh, for me it was very, something very radical because it changed completely the way to think about architecture. At one moment architecture stop to be inorganic or to be just uh, just mineral form or mineral shape but it become to be organic form or orga organic or biologic uh, shapes and uh, and uh, there is another element we work on it uh, for the also for the Swiss pavilion, uh, for the hormonarium, it was also the, the void, the, the question of the, of the air, of the space. And, uh, and also we, sometimes we choose the color of the wall or do we choose the color of the material of the wall, but uh, in the same time, we, we, is it possible to also to choose the, the color of the void or to choose the color of and the quality of the void? And, uh, and so we begin to, to work on also on this uh, as, aspect of the, of the architecture. And I think uh, it's really important to understand that it's not me that invent all these parameters, it's just parameters that we know that today that it, 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 they exist inside the world and they exist inside the space. And, uh, and so we uh, it's a, it's a, so it's a new element of architecture, and so we tr we we try to to analyze this uh, new element. And for example, here we work also on the question of the air of the space, and uh, what we propose it is to reduce the uh, the percentage the the level of oxygen inside the space, and to reduce it from. Uh, uh, for, from 12, from 21 percent of oxygen inside the air to uh, to 12 to 40, 14 uh, percent, and uh, so because the air inside the air there is a lot of nitrogen, 70 and red, uh, 70 percent of nitrogen and 21 percent of oxygen, and so we change the quantity of nitrogen and we add more nitrogen and we 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 reduce the quantity of uh, of uh, oxygen inside the space, uh, and so it's create like the situation in the in the mon in the mountain at uh, 3,000 altitude. In the mountain, you have uh, something like 300. Uh, uh, you have th at 3,000 uh, meter altitude, you have uh, a reduction of the oxygen level of uh, 21 percent to 14 percent. And what and we could see here. On this uh, curve, we, you, we could see that there is uh, also a reaction of the body, 
uh, that is the production of the erythropoietin. It is another hormone, it's called also EPO, and we know this because the sport player use it for doping themselves because it gives more oxygen. It's a hormone that multiplies the red cell inside the body, and, uh, and so you have more quickly some oxygen inside the organ, and so it gives more oxygen to the muscle, auto, and so it's why some sport players use it, and, but it's not autory, it's a, for, uh, you don't have to use it. But, uh, but if you go on the mountain, it's naturally come inside the, inside the body. And you could see in some hours, you could see the level of erythropoietin that go up inside the blood very quickly. And uh, there is also consequence, some um, psychological consequence. Uh, th th this is some writing uh, at the sea level first, and when you go up in the altitude, the, uh, you have uh, we you go to to the high mountain like uh, at the Everest, and you become you have some uh, some crazy reaction inside the brain, uh, like. Uh, uh, because you have some uh, yes, different reaction, but we we were we don't go at this uh, in the in the space in the Swiss pavilion. We don't go at this uh, position. We just stay there, so it's uh, not dangerous. And uh, and we produce this uh, this room, very this completely white room, with a very bright light coming from the floor, and so the bright light block the melatonin. And uh, it's come from also from the floor because it's like uh, on the, the like on the on the mountain, like uh, when you have snow, you have the reverberation of the of the snow, and so you receive directly on the eye uh, the light, and you have no protection from from the skin, from the from the head, and uh, and and so the level of melatonin fall down. And also we reduce all the quantity of oxygen inside the space from 21% to 14%. Uh, percent. So the space looks like uh, invisible, like uh, there is no visible, really, not really some visible uh, shapes. But, uh, but, uh, and, uh, but uh, the old, the, uh, but the, the work was, Maybe more uh, a kind of uh, um, demonstration uh, that today the elements of architecture are no more in the visible, but they are also in the invisible, and also that there is no more border between uh, the visible and the invisible, between the inorganic of the space and of the light and the and the organic of the body and the blood and the brain. And uh, and also um, uh, and um, and also the, the uh, so the, 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 it was a work on a kind of new definition of the element of architecture with uh, with this and also it was like a shift of a movement like a, a physiological movement from the sea level to the the high mountain and. For me, the, the project is, is uh, this project is more uh, research about the language of architecture. It shows that today, the, also the microscopic uh, scale, the microscopic level of architecture, of, uh, uh, become very important in, in the definition of, uh, of architecture. And, and um, Nicolas sp uh, spoke about uh, the, this idea of time, and uh, and I I, um, I I think when we begin to work on this idea of melatonin, we understand also that uh, that there is a connection not only with uh, space but also with the time because there is this night, day and night and sleep and awakeness uh, relationship. And uh, we understand that uh, maybe the question of space become also a kind of physiological question of time. 
not a narrative uh, uh, question of time, but really a physiological question of time. And uh, I, I say that I was invited for a symposium with uh, some scientific and, and uh, in 2005 and some uh, Canadian research uh, shows that they try to understand what was the wavelength that blocked the melatonin uh, between the white. Because we know that if we use bright light, br br bright white light, you, we could block the melatonin, but they, they begin to try to understand which wavelengths were involved into this phenomena. And so they try first with purple or with blue, with green, with... Uh, and uh, what they show is that um, it is, this is a spectrum of the white, um, white light between 300 nanometer and 900 nanometer, so it is... Uh, the violet there and the red there. And they show that if we use the, this part of the, of, the, of the color of the light, so it means between the blue and the green, you block the melatonin. But, but if you use a light upper than uh, 550 nanometer, it means if you use wavelengths upper in the, in the yellow or the orange or the red, uh, you have absolutely no effect on the, on the retina, on the pineal gland and on the, on the melatonin. So, um, so what we propose, it is we propose to create a kind of paradox uh, uh, of uh, a kind of new night uh, it's, it's related also with an idea of, of modernity. We know that the idea of modernity, it is a distortion of a cycle of day and night. And uh, also we know Martin Heidegger write about the idea of the modern technique and he, he was again modern, modern technique because he say modern technique provoke or change the natural cycle of day and night and natural cycle of season and winter and he say uh, modernity want to create the day during the night or want to create the summer during the winter and it was again this idea. But it's completely inside the pro project of the modernity to create this uh, artificial uh, time and to create the day during the night and, uh, and, and today we are more and more inside, inside this perpetual day and also it, it come, uh, you will see it come in London, the first time that we in introduced the street lighting inside one city, it was in 1812 in London with the gas, uh, gas street lighting. And for us, it's something completely normal to have some light inside the city. But before uh, the 19th century, it was the city during the night was completely inside the darkness. And, uh, and when we introduced the street lighting uh, in, the, uh, in 1812, it was completely a revolution, and if you read some book from Jules Verne or from a writer from the 19th century, you could see that it was like a revolution and also an idea to be against uh, God or against the natural cycle of day and night. And, uh, and, so, uh, and so modernity creates a kind of, of, uh, of perpetual of day, uh, create a kind of day inside the night. And so I was thinking, if, is it possible to recreate the night inside the modernity, but not going back, but going beyond and create a kind of artificial night into the artificial day of the night, natural night. Right. So it's a kind of double perversion of the, there is a first perversion of the modernity that changes the night into the day. And so is it possible to change this day into the night? And uh, so it was uh, this um, uh, a project uh, called Dionysme. It was shown in the, in the Saint Georges Pompidou, and it was created by uh, Valéry Guillaume and also with uh, um, Christine Massel and uh, Daniel Birbaum from the school. Uh, it was called Air de Air de Paris in Saint Georges Pompidou. And Dionysme, it, it, the name comes from the, it is a kind of the opposite of. Uh, 
of the idea of uh, nocturne, of noctambulism, it could, it could be understood also like deambulism or diurnism, like nocturnism. Uh, it is the idea to create a kind of, uh, because the idea of the noctambulism, uh, the idea of the noctambulism uh, come uh, also when the street lighting was introduced uh, in Paris or in London. Also, we, we invent the boulevard and also the theater and the opera and all the idea to go, to go uh, uh, tonight, during the night, to go and to, to walk on the boulevard and to go, go to party and uh, to, to become a uh, noctambulism. Uh, uh, come from the street lighting, from the idea of this distortion of time inside the city. And, uh, and so here it's, uh, it's an idea to invent a kind of uh, uh, deambulism or, or to, to inside, the, inside the, the artificial night of the modernity. And uh, so it was a, the, uh, a very a room as a production of one room like this, uh, we, we use only uh, arranged uh, wavelengths. We use a lot of wavelengths, so it was uh, the, the intensity of light was the same than outside, uh, like the natural sunlight. So it was something like 7,000 7, lux. And, uh, but the wavelengths was uh, were focused inside the orange, so uh, there is absolutely no effect on the melatonin. So it means that for the body, it, for visi uh, in the visible, it looks like the day, it looks very bright and very light, but for the body, like uh, uh, physiological, uh, inside the body, it is like a night. So, it's a, the, so there is a, a kind of paradox because it is a light, it is a night, a physiological night that look like a like a, like a day, and uh, and inside this uh, this space we we introduce some music. Uh, it was a, we we reverse. It is just a, a kind of um, of uh, reverse of the nocturne of John Field because. Uh, the, the, the format of uh, Nocturne for the piano, we know the Nocturne from uh, Chopin, it's very famous, but it was invented by uh, an Irish musician, John Field, in 1815. So uh, he invented this idea of Nocturne for the piano, and the idea of Nocturne for the piano, it is a little the idea that you could play the nocturne for the piano during the day, and you have a kind of evocation of the night during the day. You could, you could play when you want the nocturne for the piano, and uh, and so it's maybe it's not uh, hasard that uh, John Field invent this distortion of time inside a cultural field of music three day, three years after that London invents the street lighting that distorts the natural cycle of day and night inside the city. So it is, for me, it's really the beginning of modernity. It is this moment that we, we begin to distort the season, we distort the cycle of day and night, and we, in, we go inside a, a, a new, new, new kind of new, new world. And so the tune for the piano, it, uh, it, uh, we reverse the nocturne and uh, we just create a kind of, of evocation of the, of the day but through the nocturne uh, material. And um, so with, uh, just uh, with, um, in the same uh, process, we work on the Split Time Cafe for, in, uh, in Austria. And it, it was just a, um, a small project uh, about the idea that we could uh, produce a space, uh, we could produce architecture, but not by designing space, but by designing spa uh, time. And so we use just three um, glass uh, filtered uh, envelope, one with a blue, uh, blue light, and the other it's the yellow light and the other it's transparent uh, filter. And so it's mean like 
the yellow light creates a kind of perpetual night and the blue creates a kind of uh, perpetual day and the natural light uh, change when it is really the night and really the day and uh, so but and so you move you could move inside the space by uh, not really by changing space but by changing spa uh, time and so you could jump from the day to the night or jump from the and um, and uh, and so it's a it's a possibility for designing space today. And so the yellow, it is a, like a journey. It's a, this perpetual perpetual night, and the blue, it's a perpetual day, and and we have after the change of day. So, um, I will present some other project about uh, more. It's uh, more about uh, the question of the of the weather, of the climate inside the building, related with sustainable development, and uh, and so when when we we begin to to uh, to work on this parameter, uh, we we understand that. Uh, the, 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 if we work on the temperature, if we work on the on the light, if we work on the relative humidity inside the building, it creates some uh, different atmosphere. And uh, and we know that in the history of architecture, the, there is the idea of uh, program of uh, the name that of come from. Um, from the 19th century, the idea that we have inside the house, for example, we have the living room, the bathroom, the bedroom, uh, this separation of the program uh, uh, in different rooms comes from the 19th century. And before, if you look, if we have some, uh, there is some story about this. For example, we know that when uh, the architect uh, Le Bernin, Bernini built for the king in France, uh, the palace, le, le, le Louvre. Uh, there is he, he just designed space without function. Uh, the, it was a big space, and uh, and so there is, it was a succession, a succession of space. But there is no function inside the space. There is not the living room, the bathroom. Or, uh, it's, uh, it was just space, and uh, we know that Colbert asked to the architect, but where the king will sleep. And uh, Bernini say it was not a question of architecture; it is a question of management. Of, and uh, and if you think about, for example, old countryside house, there is not a really um, a sp a room. There is the fire somewhere, and there is the south, uh, uh, the south side, and the north side, and and. Um, and the, the way to organize the house is more related with the atmosphere and with the temperature zone related with the south uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, with the heating, uh, the fire. And, uh, and sometimes uh, uh, we know, for example, the, uh, the, the fire creates a place uh, for, it, it, it was a place where it was a kitchen, but it was also the living room. And we know also some, the old people sleep near the fire uh, place. And so the, 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 the idea to have separate room for different function, it, it is some, also something relatively new. It's, a, it's not a, an old idea in a, inside the field of architecture. And maybe the field of the idea of architecture, or the inside space of idea of architecture was more related with temperature. And so you use the north wall to keep uh, the food or the milk, and you use a south wa uh, wall to, to leave, and you use the basement to, for, uh, to keep the apple or, or the wine, and to use, you use, uh, so the, the house become a, a kind of meteorological uh, space with different uh, climate, and, and there is different functions, that, and also it change depending on the season. And uh, something also we don't know, for example, if we take the example of the wine, 
we don't know if it is the cave that invents the wine or if it is the wine that invents the cave. So it means that maybe sometime some, uh, the way to, to live could be introduced by the climate. And we know, for example, in France, there is the idea of la veillée. La veillée it is uh, when people are uh, in the countryside, in the small village, people are um, have some meeting during the evening inside the, in, in the winter and they, they come all together uh, near the fire and they speak all together and, uh, and it was the idea also because it was too cold inside the house and so they, all the people come inside the same place and so they, they share their own temperature of the body and they, and they create a kind of more uh, comfort uh, space. And so from this uh, climate problem come the invention of uh, new social behaviors. So, uh, there is some invention of... Uh, and uh, so, uh, so I was thinking it may be all this new technique of, uh, related to sustainable development uh, with insulation or with a, a double flux air renewal could maybe reinvent the way to organize the house, the, 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 the function of the house or the way to uh, the typology of the house. And uh, so it was uh, the project we, we work on it for at the CCA in Montreal. Uh, and the idea was to produce a kind of artificial uh, uh, space with a variation of light uh, and to measure each, each point, uh, to measure the variation of temperature, of relative humidity and of light and to think if maybe uh, from this it could, uh, what kind of uh, place it could be and we don't know at the beginning what it could be. And so I, I asked to a French writer so there is some, uh, uh, just I, I will let some, some different, uh, 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 he write some different uh, text and you could, you, you will see that uh, uh, he, he tried to understand, he don't know what it is, the space at the beginning and he tried to understand what it could be. The first one. The place where I find myself is neutral, to all intents and purposes. White, not a dazzling one, mm -hmm. but an indecisive shade, deceptive, ephemeral, altogether absent. Have there been something before me to see, it would be easily seen in this beautiful night, which is not an excessive, nor meager, and, all things considered, Quite lacking in adjectivity. Within such a space, a firm one's indifference for that illusion, one might say that it is neither hot nor cold. The room appears to be cubical, with neither window nor door visible, with neither furniture nor adornment. I am still lying on my back. Legs unstretched, arms resting by my sides, chest slightly raised to an angle of about 20 degrees from the metal base, which might be a low bedstead. Possibly with an option, allowing it to be raised more than usual, adjustable, such as those found in hospitals. Might I be in the recovery room of some clinic, surgical or otherwise? A thought crosses my mind. Perhaps this is a mortuary where my lifeless body has been transported after an accident. This might be a mortuary. Yet something prevents me from endorsing such a theory. If I were dead, especially thus exposed to the icy air of a moment, I should feel an encroaching cold gradually taking hold of me. Yet I am rather the opposite impression, that of the growing warmth of an alcove, which soon becomes the hot accelerations of a tropical forest, whose damp and heavy breath envelops me, disorients, and invades me. 
in October. I believe I see the dim light of the walls surrounding me move as if the sun, filtered by foliage of the nice trees, people on high by muffled rumors, reach the ground and me in the form of a confusion of particles without a clear contours, without aim, without purpose. So, it, so it's a, it, the, the project it was shown also in Manifesta 7 uh, in, Bolz, in, in Rovereto. And uh, so it, it was uh, the first idea that maybe uh, all this new technique could also change the typology of the house. And, and so I, I will finish with this uh, last project. It's a, it's a project for uh, houses on the, on water, and uh, so if I just uh, take the, the small uh, this uh, recommendation for sustainable architecture, we we could see this uh, different different term, and uh, and there is this soft double flux air renewal, and so maybe you know this system. It is to because we have to renew the air inside the, inside the space, it's, it's uh, the normal ventilation. And uh, before, uh, the ventilation was done by, uh, by accident inside the wall or, or the windows was not just ad really adapt to the wall and so there is some microscopic, uh, some small hole and so there is always a change of the air. And, uh, and uh, but today, if we want to to have a, a very good insulation, we have to have a very perfect um, uh, proof, uh, um, waterproof and airproof of the of the envelope. And so there is no more exchange, no more accidental exchange between outside and inside. And so we have to to renew the air, and we have to renew the air because when we we, we, the, the first, uh, there is different reason. The, the first reason, it is when we breathe, when we, at each time we take the air, we, we take the air, maybe it's 45 degree, 45 percent of relative humidity inside the air, and we take the breath inside us, and, uh, and there is a lot of, uh, inside the lunch, there is a lot of water of relative, and when we, we blow the, the the air is full of uh, um, vapor of uh, water. It's uh, something like uh, 95 percent relative humidity percent uh, of of um, of, uh, of humidity, and so it means uh, 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 we we charge the air of uh, relative humidity, and so we have to change this air and to bring f some fresh air. So this is the first reason why we always change, uh, we have the ventilation inside the building. The second as aspect, it is also the oxygen because we burn the oxygen and we produce some CO2 and uh, carbonic gas and we have also to bring some new oxygen. But it is uh, not so, so if it's important uh, after a lot of time, but uh, the first reason it really it's, uh, it's a question of uh, humidity. And uh, here you could see some, uh, some data. If you sleep, uh, you, you don't produce a lot of uh, humidity because you are, you, you, your movement of uh, respiration is very slow. And uh, if, you are, uh, if you move, uh, you, you produce more humidity. And if you use the kitchen, you produce a lot, and uh, the bathroom, too, because you take a shower and it creates a lot of uh, uh, vapor inside the space, and, uh, and so we have to to change this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, um, uh, this uh, the air inside the room. And for example, we know that inside a, a, a school room, you have to change the air each 20 times each hour. You have to change completely the air. And if you change the air, uh, before, uh, uh, before what you do it is to open the window and, uh, uh, for example, in the, in the school, when I was young, we opened the window after one hour and we change the air and we close. 
and uh, but today if you do this you lose a lot of heat because uh, if it is minus 10 degree outside and you open the window and it is 20 you have a big quantity of cold air that go inside the house inside the school inside the room and so you have to to warm uh, from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius for so you have to put 30 degree of uh, energy to change the the air and so it's a lot of um, of uh, you burn a lot of CO2 to for doing this and so the new technique it is this uh, double flux air renewal it is to to use the fresh air inside a, uh, that go inside the, the inside the space and it go out but uh, and so it maybe it's minus 10 degree outside it's go out inside the room it's 20 degrees so the radiator eats the, the air and after it go out uh, uh, but before it go out it give the temperature to the fresh air so, so it's a, there is a, so the air go like this and uh, and so it's warm the cold the, the warm air warm the cold air and so it means that it's a kind of of pre-warming of the of the air, and and so it's uh, so it's the air that go inside the house. Maybe it's not minus ten uh, minus ten uh, degree. It's uh, maybe ten degree, and so you have only to warm from ten degree to twenty degree. So it's not uh, it's a big uh, gain of uh, energy. And when you do this. Uh, when you do this, you have to introduce uh, uh, the, the fresh air inside the most dry part of the house uh, because uh, uh, you, so in the bedroom and after it go inside the living room and after it go inside the kitchen or inside the bathroom because it go uh, uh, from the most drier part of the house to the most humid part of the house because if you go in the other side uh, you bring some humidity into the dry, uh, and so it's related with what uh, with, the, with this uh, result. So I think, uh, for me, as I, I told at the beginning uh, of the lecture, it's, it's not. Uh, I'm interesting uh, in this because I think it changed the way the typology of one house. Uh, when we design a, one house, for example, you have the idea of. You, have, you work on the idea of private and public and uh, you, you first design the public uh, space and after you have a stair or you have a corridor that, cre that uh, go into the most uh, private part of the house. So it's, it's another rule that uh, creates a way to organize the house. But here, if you look to the organization of, uh, of the house, it's not related with this, it's related with the dry to the wet. And I think it's... Uh, why we could not work with this uh, typology? Why we could not design an, uh, one house related with this uh, typology? And so I, I propose this plan. It's, a, it's a very literal. Uh, it's a, it's a, the design of one house from the most dry to the most uh, uh, wet. And, and uh, and so the air there is a, the the house is composed on the move, uh, on the movement of the air through the house from the most dry part to the most uh, uh, humid uh, part of the house and also it's house on the lake and so it's uh, it's go directly also inside the lake at the end so it's it's come from uh, thirty percent of relative humidity to uh, one hundred percent of relative humidity. And also, uh, 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 what we could see is that if we design first the room related with uh, relative humidity, after you could, uh, we don't know exactly what kind of function it is. And, and so, for example, here, we, we could see that maybe here it's a room, but it could be also a living room, or here it's a bathroom, but it could be also a kitchen, and the other place could be like a like a swimming pool or like a living room so we it's uh, uh, we know that for example in in Baghdad uh, the old house uh, the old Islamic house uh, there is no name for the um, there is no name for like living room or bedroom because the room change uh, the function of the room change 
uh, related with the time of the hour, or the time of the day. So, so it means, for example, the terrace become the living room uh, during the night, and, you, and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the basement become uh, the living room become during the day, and it changes, it becomes the, 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 it becomes the, the another use between the day, and so it's a, and, and the name of the room it's more related with uh, with atmospheric condition and not with social condition or not with uh, with a living room or sleeping room. Or so I think it's, it creates like the way to imagine the house become a more atmospheric house and. So this is a plan, and uh, it's related with uh, with this um, different relative humidity level and the section. And some view, view inside. So uh, I think I will finish now. Um, okay, thank you. I guess there are some questions um, to Philippe. Um, maybe I, I'll start with one. Um, if you see your work in the, in the context of uh, an environmental agenda in today's politics of architecture, and I think this the, the current debate on, on, on the environment is pretty much guided by I think by setting up standards, by kind of political correctness through building and. Um, I think you, you have used a couple of times um, the word or notions that you will actually pervert situations or you distort them. Um, so it seems to be a politically completely incorrect what you're doing in order to maybe create a new language of, of, um, of architecture. Mm -hmm. So what, how would you position your work within this um, larger debate and? No, uh, I think for, for me uh, there is a, like a citizen. I'm uh, I'm completely f for uh, the sustainable development. If I, 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 I am, if I, but but as an architect is not really. I'm not really interesting into this. Uh, and uh, I, I really yes, I'm really interesting into the way that it transforms the. the Typology for the, the the program of uh, of uh, architecture, and I think it's uh, if you think about the also the modernity, uh, I think uh, or the concrete uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. At the beginning, it was just uh, you use, for example, l'Opéra de Paris. It was built in steel, but it was covered by wrong, by a fake stone. Uh, so it gives the illusion that it was a, a, a stone building, but in, in reality, it was um, it was built in, in steel. And so we have to wait something like uh, 40 years before uh, before uh, Bauhaus and Le Corbusier to accept the. To show the steel and to to use uh, also the potential uh, potentiality of the of the concrete and the steel and the, to have the fenêtre en longueur, to have the pilotis, to have the uh, le, le plan libre. All these elements come from the steel used and from the concrete. But and so I think you know it, uh, it, at one moment I think the modernity. Uh, Understand. Uh, don't take just concrete and steel uh, like just uh, uh, just 
just a, a technique, but they use this to do something new. And I think we have to do the same with uh, uh, sustainable development. And, and in France, for example, when the question of environment uh, arrived, uh, maybe two years ago, uh, all the architects were very boring with uh, all this. They say, oh, pff, we are, it's a new problem, and uh, we, don't, we could no more doing uh, what we want. We have to, uh, to create some... Uh, to you uh, and uh, and so I think for me it's uh, it's really not a problem. It's really uh, the way to distort uh, the way to think about architecture and to try to discover new new field and maybe so sometime in this project sometime it go uh, uh, it go so, so so sometime it's more an analyze of the potentiality of what we maybe we could do maybe it's go. Uh, and, and, and but and in the same time it changed a little the way of of thinking about space and I, and for example I, I'm for me and very interesting into the idea that you could design space by designing the relative humidity level and I think it's uh, it's also becoming maybe more sensual uh, because you you begin to have a more physical uh, uh, sensual approach to the space because uh, it's uh, and also the thermal approach, I think it's more related with the body. And, uh, and so for me, I like this idea of uh, working with this uh, sensual aspect of the space and thermal aspect of the space. And, and, uh, and so I, I, I want to, 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 to try to, to work inside this uh, agenda, yes. Um, I have a question about your work, particularly in general. That uh, when you work with these uh, ideas uh, in, in architecture, like what I found, my, my perception of it was working on very intangible elements within the architecture and pro trying to produce effects through the intangibility of it. Like you can't touch it, but you can feel it. Mm -hmm. But the effect is produced by tactile elements, things you can feel. But, uh, I don't know if it's my personal opinion, maybe you can tell me more about it. I find a lack of materiality, a kind of feeling for the various material effects, which uh, when I think of these aspects from vernacular architecture from different parts of the world, it has been a very strong aspect in controlling these intangible effects. Mm -hmm. So a certain material produces a certain effect, and that is how they respect that aspect and use it in the architecture. Mm -hmm. How much of it relates to your work and if not, why? Yeah. No, for, for example, I work now on a project in Marghera in, in Venice and, uh, and I use, um, it's, um, there, there is one new bu building and the transformation on a, an old structure in concrete uh, with arch uh, uh, industrial structure. And uh, inside this building, I introduced two uh, climate, two like two uh, pipe, very big pipe, uh, but it's become like space. And one pipe is inside um, is black, and inside a very uh, stone, like a inertia material, and uh, and it's white. No, the first one is white in with um, with stone. And the other is black in steel. And uh, so um, I use this um, for, uh, it, it is public space, so it will be stair and uh, all and thing like that. But it is also the primal uh, air, condition, air, air gain, uh, air pipe inside the building. And so we will use uh, the, the physical uh, quality of the material, of the inertia of the stone, to to create a kind of perpetual winter or kind of winter uh, cold space we, because we will use this um, it's a, there is an old uh, there, uh, there is a, um, a house from Palladio in uh, and he use he creates the, the uh, he takes the air inside a cavern in the, and he, in a grotto and he, he, he takes the air under the house and he, he and the air go inside the house and uh, so it is a little the idea to create a kind of grotto, a physical grotto uh, inside the building and to take the air from this grotto during the summer because in this space it will become, it will uh, be more cold because we use also some uh, 
classical um, uh, we 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 refresh during the night and so uh, the, con the the stone you you take six hours to refresh the inertia of the stone and after it takes six hours to come back the coolness of the come back and so you could use during the day for the office to cool the office during the day by using the coolness of the night through the inertia and and the other pipe is a steel pipe black and so it will become being very hot during the day and we use it during the winter to warm uh, you, we take the air inside this pipe to warm so we, uh, so the, the 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 idea to use materiality also related uh, with this, uh, I'm very interesting to this. I don't know if it, it was your question. So the question yeah. is why it doesn't come up with any of the words already done, or was it intentional, or was it an intention to keep away from this aspect? Because if you could produce a hot, uh, like a warmer object by without using an energy uh, drawing elements, you could yes. just have uh, completely natural elements that yeah. have uh, no. Capacity. Yes. So then, then, since you are very intensively working on this aspect of energy and effect and yes. intangible effects in space, I yes. was wondering if this became a part of your research. Yes. And that's why, like, but then since you say you are now working on these things. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Probably I was not in the, in the first part of the lecture, but I would like to know what is the relation between uh, meteorological and like macro in macro scale and, and the micro in the cycle. Physiological, yes. Physiological. Uh, no, it, it was uh, the, the idea of, yes, architecture, yes, maybe it was a uh, at one scale, and so I think it could be interesting to go uh, beyond in the larger uh, scale to the meteorological or more climatic uh, scale, and uh, and also to the microscopic, more inside the blood or inside the body, inside the hormonal uh, scale of, uh, of the physiological scale. And I, I think today architecture, it's uh, uh, maybe it's in between this. Uh, this microscopic as approach uh, of the hormonal, what's happened inside the body, or the neurological uh, uh, approach, and also the, uh, the macroscopic approach of the atmosphere. And, uh, so, it's, uh, so then you can have a relation with psychological? Psychological? Psychological, physiological, psychological? Uh, so we don't know exactly if, uh, if there, is a, there is some research about physiological and uh, psych psychological. Uh, uh, for example, the scientific, if some people are working because they say that maybe the lack of, uh, the, the there is a, a relationship between melatonin and sadness, and uh, they say, but they are not sure of this. So we have to be very careful when we, uh, when, if you want to do some link between this, because it's not sure. And, uh, and so you could not affirm that there is a relationship. But they say, because uh, they say that, uh, so it, it's called seasonal affective disorder. They say that during the autumn or winter, people are more sad, and there is more. They consult uh, the doctor more often, and so we know that there is more consultation at this time. And, and so they say maybe because during the winter there is less light than during the summer because uh, the angle of the years uh, is different, uh, and uh, we. Uh, and so the, we need a lot of light to block the melatonin inside the eye, and so you have less light, and so you have less, um, the, you have more melatonin also during the day. And so maybe this, this, uh, the, way, this, the fact that you have some melatonin also during the day could give to you maybe the, this uh, feeling to be a little sad or to be a little uh, tired. And, uh, and, and so some scientists are working on this as they try to understand if it is real or not, but we don't know exactly if it is real. Uh, so you could not, I, I, we, you, when, when you work with scientific uh, things like this, you have to be very careful because you could be very, you could become very stupid. Or you could say you have melatonin and you sleep, and you could, and, and it's absolutely not like this, you know, it's, um, it's uh, 
uh, and also for me, something very interesting, uh, it's also the way I want, with all these parameters, also I, I want to try to escape from the modernity determinism also. And I think I, I want to also to introduce new freedom, for example, the idea of to, to have some migration inside the house, the possibility to change uh, from warm to cold. I think it's, it's, a, it's also a new freedom inside the house uh, because in the modern house you have always the same temperature inside, inside the room and so it's a kind of deterministic uh, climate. And so uh, in this polarization, the first project, it's create an imbalance inside the house and so it's create, a, uh, for me it's, it's really the possibility to reinvent a, a kind of freedom inside the, the way to use the, the house and, uh, and uh, yes. Any other questions? If not, uh, I'd like to thank you so much for your lecture. Okay. It was very intriguing. Thank you. Mm -hmm.